return in, or if he ran away, then he would come back. But um, he he could certainly use his dog. So we could pray for Mark Pontius. So I said briefly that we had a ministry opportunity out of that rummage sale. And I just want, I, so I want to tell you guys about it because if people have ideas or somehow um, you want to be a part of it, and I don't even know the details yet, but um, the Holy Spirit can start working on all of us. So the mailman who delivers around here spoke to the administrator at Nine Mile um, Trailer Port, the mobile home facility on there and she would like for somebody to come in and have a Wednesday night service something like that and so I don't we want to get to know these people we don't just want to go in there and preach the word of God and walk out so what would be great is if we have people from this church um, actually be a part of it and like I said I don't know any of the details but you can maybe be thinking um, but it would be nice to maybe have some snacks and some drinks and we just get to know these people and, and actually be a part of their life instead of somebody who steps in and steps out and tells them. Um, so uh, you can be thinking about that, praying about that, and, and I'm, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will be nudging some of you. It's just whether you step forward or not. So even conversation, ideas, whatever, um, please let me know because... It is an opportunity. There is there's a lot of people down there and in churches, buildings like this are kind of becoming irrelevant. People don't come to church and maybe this is our opportunity for the church to go out. So be thinking about that. Anything else? Scott, there's another phrase kind of come out of uh, your rummage sale that night. I stopped by here on the way to my our, our meeting on Friday night and several people here prayed for that and we had the best meeting Friday night we've ever had mm -hmm. uh, it went on and on it was so much participation that some of those ladies were those ankle bracelets you know what they are and they're on a time schedule and it is very strict. I finally had to stop the meeting so they could get back to their place of residence. Mm -hmm. That's how intense and that's the amount of participation we had. So I thank the people that prayed for that because don't under, ever underestimate the power of prayer. Yeah, it's all the same spirit. Yeah, that, good. Thank you for sharing that. We, we should just pray for that, that continue um, uh, success and the continued ability to share Jesus with, with those ladies. So let, let's just pray for Redemption House.
Amen. Since you're not going to say anything, are you? Because you forgot. Yep. <laughs> yep, you did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was just a, not very long ago we talked about that. <laughs> what? Oh, go ahead. Um, and on Sunday morning, so I'll um, make a list and like for dates, and then if you want to sign up, you can. The thing is, you'll have to do the whole the coffee, and the, if you want to bring something, you'll have to do that too. So it'll just be, I'll do it next week, and then we can. So we want to start the coffee and the cookies yeah. or snacks downstairs yeah. and we don't want to put it all on one person to have to come in and make coffee every week and bring cookies or so if you are interested in that and we get enough people where you just have to do it once every three, four, five, six weeks, you don't have to bring the cookies, you don't have to make the cookies, you can ask somebody else to make cookies, you can buy cookies, you can do, but just if we could get enough people. Um, to where nobody has to do it every week would be great. And you can talk to Ann about that if you are interested. And um, we'll, we'll buy juice and coffee, that, that part you don't have to worry about. But yeah, thanks. Yeah, I did forget about that. <laughs> so are you saying, like what time does this start? Do we have to come up for the sermon? Or should we stay downstairs? <laughs> oh, she's gone. Oh, click the I just click had a job <clears throat> and she's gone. What? Click the finger. Can you put that and put it down to Godzilla? The okay. what? Right there. Which one? Point at it again. I want to watch it. That one. The blue green thingy. Yeah. Slide it down to Godzilla. Hang on, it's, it's going. It wasn't clicking at first. There okay. Thank you. <laughs> there is a, a thing called Godzilla. I mean, I think. Oh. Is that what no, I meant Godzilla. <laughs> the picture of. He was missing a couple words. Do any of you remember the movie Godzilla? Oh yes. The old one, not the new one. You know, people come out of the shops and they're, oh, you know, and they're running and, and, and then eventually people come out because they want to watch and, and look and the military comes out and all that. Well, the reason I bring this up is I had a dream. So I don't, I don't want you to think that I am prophetic or that I'm trying to tell the, the future. I'm just going to tell you what God taught me. So, I, I was. This is a few weeks ago. Now I, I was asleep, of course. And out of the sky came the pyramids of Egypt, and they were slowly, slowly, slowly coming down. I don't know why the pyramids of Egypt. I don't. I don't understand any of that. But the pyramids were coming down. And I instantly thought Jesus is coming back. And, and sure enough, the people started coming out of the, the shops and now on the streets and they was pushing, putting up bleachers and we've been putting up bleachers this year now. So we put up bleachers for everybody to come out and watch this thing. And I'm instantly thinking Jesus is coming back. We got to tell people about Jesus. We have to tell people about Jesus because after, after he comes back, there, I mean, it's over. The, the, it's over. And so I started telling this bleacher, you know, about Jesus, and they would just laugh and, and sh shoosh me and, you know, send me on my way, and I'd tell other Christians, whoever you're sitting by, tell them about Jesus, because I think this is something about Jesus coming back, and that was, that was my dream. Um, the military came, fired things at the, and of course it didn't reach it, and, and that was it. And so, it, it really hit me about, I, be, I truly believe that, that is, when Jesus returns, that's what it's going to be like. Because people, and one of the reasons is, about the next week, I went and got my tooth capped, 
and I was talking with the, whatever the lady is. I was talking with her, and she was talking about their church. They had a Bible school, and they had several hundred kids, too, and it was a big, it was a big event. It went really well. But they actually had kids that never, ever, ever heard the name Jesus in Wells County. Never. And so I started thinking about it's it's serious. You know, we we think we, we put it off, you know, a day here and a day. It's not that big of a deal. Or if somebody asked me about it, yep, yeah, I'll talk about Jesus, or it's it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal. Um out at the pavilion we was talking about people we don't like and you know they'll go to hell. And it's like, well, somebody said they deserve to go to hell. Well, we all deserve to go to hell. But another person said, I wouldn't wish, wish that on my worst enemy to go to hell. Can you imagine? Have you ever been? I, I, I can only imagine what deep, deep, deep depression is like. Where people are on the brink of suicide. That's what I think hell is like. There's no coming out of it. I don't know if you physically burn or I don't know if you are just so tormented. And every day, there is no possibility of ever coming out of it. And you feel that, that much pain, and you just want to die, and it's not going to happen. Day after day after, that's what I think hell is like. That could be physical pain. I don't know. Yes? But it could be both. It could be both. Uh, all I know is it's not going to be good. And when people die... Their decision making is over. And so I, I want to talk a little bit about sharing Jesus with people. Because we have, um, I've heard a lot of people, and, and I've probably even said it, we just need to live like Jesus. We need to be good people and live like Jesus. I don't, I don't, do, I don't talk about Jesus, but I... I do my best to be like Jesus. And, and we should be. That's the sanctification part of our lives in Christ. We should be getting better every day, but we shouldn't be doing it um, legalistically. Jesus should be transforming our lives to where it is just our life. <clears throat> um, Acts 4.12 says, And there is salvation to no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, by which we must be saved. And they are talking about Jesus. So you can live a good life. You can be a good person. If that person sees you and says, man, you live a good life. I want to live a good life just like you. They're going to hell. If they never heard Jesus. They're going to hell. If they live a perfect life from that point on, they're going to hell. If they never hear the name Jesus. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. I'll try not to go too fast because there's a lot of scripture. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So there is a, a, a story in the Bible that I want, I think I can correlate with what I am trying to say, and it's in Acts 14. So Paul and Barnabas are out on their missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas is out on their missionary journey, and they, they are going to the cities of Lystra and Derbe. And I'm going to start at verse 8, go through 13. In Lystra there sat a man crippled in his feet, who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. And at that, and at that the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw that Paul had, what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us from, in human form. 
Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them, meaning Paul and Barnabas. And so when I read this, when Paul looked at the man and said, stand up on your feet, that was it. That's all he said was, stand up on your feet. And if you look at other, um, like when Peter healed Pete, Peter heals people when they baptize people when Peter says in the name of Jesus Christ stand up in the name of Jesus Christ be healed he was pointing the healing and in whatever he was doing to Jesus Christ and Paul and I don't think he did it on purpose he was probably just could you imagine healing somebody or just being pumped up and and God's just using you in a mighty way and you feel the Holy Spirit all the time and, and Paul just says get up Get up on your feet. And God, and, and Paul knows that Jesus is going to heal him. But he forgot those words. And what happened when, in my head, these people seen Paul heal this man? And who did they worship? Paul and Barnabas. And what does worshiping Paul and Barnabas do? They were appeasing Paul and Barnabas. They thought Paul and Barnabas on their behalf, um, they could bless these people. And Paul went on to say, no, 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 do not, do not worship me or Barnabas. It is God, the creator of the universe. And he went on to share the gospel with them. And he, he I shouldn't say corrected, but he went on to say the truth about Jesus. And so when we go and we say, well, I'm just, I don't talk about Jesus, but I live a good life. I have an experience where that that doesn't work either because I was in the construction field and in construction I've talked about it before it's pretty rough and they have got a whole different language about them and um, and when I got saved um, after the fact I don't know how long it was I was reading the Bible and he said and it, it talked about foul language and, and there's no use for it. And God delivered me from cussing. It was, that was part of my, but by that happening, and people noticed that I quit cussing. But people, when they got around me, when they cussed, they would apologize to me. And I believe they apologized to me thinking that if they live a right life around me that somehow it makes them okay and right because God seen them not cussing at that time and so around me they would act like good people and, and I'm not saying they were, weren't good people they just weren't saved but around me they thought if they acted right I could be the one that would bless them and, and maybe that would make them right with God and, and that's not the case the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is that powerful. We don't have to, we don't have to prove anything. The Bible says the name of Jesus is that powerful. So the gospel. So so what does that mean? So it means that we truly need to be talking about Jesus. And I'm not saying that you walk up to everybody and every conversation is um, gospel. But every conversation could be that. If that is who we are, if that if baseball is what we are, we live for during the summer. We talk about baseball. If if whatever it is, boating, bicycling, shopping, working, whatever, if that is our life, we talk about that, and it's just we just talk about it. But the name of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Robin was talking about shame and guilt, and sometimes we don't talk about Jesus. Sometimes I don't talk about Jesus um, because I'm just a little bit embarrassed because how do I prove this? And the word says I don't have to prove anything. The name of Jesus is that powerful. So the good news, and somebody tell me what the good news of the gospel is. And this is a literal question. 
I don't want you to be, if you are embarrassed to tell me what the gospel of Jesus Christ is here in this church, and you are known followers of Jesus Christ, it's going to be really, really tough out there. So maybe just tell me a part of the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just a part of it. That, that's a big part of it. Yes. That is a very big part of it. What's that? He loves us no matter what. And where we're at and, and no matter what we've done. Um, I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want people to feel guilty. But I do want you to understand, I just asked that question and some of you, maybe most of you, well, I, I know what to say, but I don't want to say it. Because I, I'm not really, I just don't want to say it. We're in church. We're talking about Jesus Christ the savior of the world. And I know some of you have given your life to Christ and I, I, I'm thinking most of you have given your life to Christ. We can't be embarrassed about saying Jesus in a church. We can't. And, and it's hard. I understand when you go to work, when you go around other people who are of this world to have a, a conversation about Jesus, but that's because we are putting so much pressure on ourselves or we are worried about not being part of that group because they think you're weird. Um, when Jesus returns, they're not going to be thinking we're weird. They're going to be thinking, oh my gosh, they were right. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus has to be spoken. Not what Jesus not how we look like Jesus, not the way we walk, not the way we talk. That is, that is a testimony of who Jesus is in our life. But if nobody hears the name Jesus, if those little kids in that Bible school grow up never knowing who Jesus is, those little kids, those little innocent kids today are going to be in hell tomorrow. It, it's serious. Everybody talks about, oh my gosh, the times are, the times are getting close. The times are getting closer. I don't know if they're getting close, but they are getting closer. Heaven and hell, have you ever thought about eternity? Eternity. I can't stop thinking about hell. And what that would be like knowing that every minute and every day you are miserable and it's never going to change. The good news. We have good news. And, and you, don't, you don't even have to know anything about the Bible. There are people who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they were transformed and they were so excited. And they just talked about what Jesus did in their life. There was a man that was healed of blindness that didn't know who Jesus was, but he knew Jesus' name. And he said, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does, but I know Jesus healed me. And that's a testimony. Jesus is the power. Not our lives. Jesus is the power. Not our ability to do good and to um, treat people right. Jesus is the power. And people have to hear Jesus. Um, so 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Do That's sometimes we forget about that. Like the people who bomb shelters. Um, that's not with gentleness and respect. But keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of the slander. Always be prepared. Psalms 96, 2 through 4. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all the people, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praises. He is to be feared above all gods. Proclaim his salvation day after day. And sometimes 
you know, I think it's grand that I talked about Jesus to somebody in a couple weeks. There are people every day that I could say something about Jesus. When, when people are over here talking about the government, um, I could interject that I don't trust anybody in the government, but I trust Jesus. I don't trust anything about my ability to retire with money, but I trust Jesus. Every day, every conversation, something can be interjected because if Jesus is my life and Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is who I follow, I shouldn't have any problem talking about Jesus. Um, I was watching the Viking show yesterday and, and I, I told the king, they all call my Lord because the king is their Lord and their master. Their wives call their husbands Lord because their husbands are the master of the home. This is way back when. Today, I, uh, yesterday, I asked my wife to start calling me Lord. <laughs> and I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It didn't work. <clears throat> but they, I, I said, their Lord, their king, they do it. Whether they <coughs> trust it, whether they believe it, whether they think that is the best thing, it doesn't matter. They trust their Lord and they do it. The good thing is we have the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Holy Spirit. Um, Carl asked for prayer. There was prayer um, in a group. That Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit worked on people that we don't even know, softened and allowed them to hear the truths that Carl spoke. That Holy Spirit, not us, not our prayer. We got to be a part of it. But the spirit of the living God is, have, is who had the power and the ability to do that. We don't have to, we don't have to uh, be able to make somebody come to, we just have to allow Jesus to do the work. If we're asked to be a part of something, um, part of something in God's plan, we are not, uh, it's not going to succeed or fail because of us. But we get to be a part of it. Um, and the Holy Spirit's help. And so Luke 12, 12. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. And the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say is just exactly what Robin was talking about. Um, the Holy Spirit would not have humbled her. Well, her guilt might have, because it sounds like it was a pretty shameful act. It was. Um, but the Holy Spirit used God's word in humility to sanctify her, to make her more like Christ. And the Holy Spirit will use God's word. That's why, that's why you have to be reading the Bible and not just reading it and look, look into it and study it and understand it because the Holy Spirit will use this all the time. If, when Robin was talking about the heart of that autistic kid, that's the Holy Spirit just instantly brought up David. It was David's heart that made him king, not his ability to do anything. And God gave him the power to, but uh, I'll stay on something. So Luke 12, 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So when we're looking there and we see somebody over there and we can see that they're upset and the Holy Spirit says, you need to go talk to them. I don't know what to say to them. How can I possibly comfort them? I don't, I have no idea what to do. But Scott, I didn't tell you to, to go over there knowing what to do. I asked you to go over there. My spirit will help you Maybe you don't need to say anything. Maybe you just say, can I help you? And maybe you, maybe there is some truth that she needs to hear. Maybe she needs to. But when we put all the ability on ourselves that we see somebody over there that the Holy Spirit's asking us, and I don't know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say. I don't want to lead them astray. I don't want them, I don't want to make it worse. I don't want to do it. And so then I walk away. The power of the Holy Spirit. We don't give the power of the Holy Spirit um, enough credit. 
the power of the Holy Spirit. Leaning on the everlasting arms of God is leaning on the everlasting arms of the Holy Spirit. And when we lean on the everlasting arms of the Holy Spirit, that is where we get our peace. That is where we don't have to fear anything. We don't have to fear about going up to that person and talking about Jesus or just talking about their life or just getting involved and saying, Man, I see you're hurting me. Can I, can I help? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does it. The, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will help you do it all. The Holy Spirit will remind you what to say. It will help you say what you need to say. It will help you to do what you need to do. It will help you to keep your mouth shut if you need to keep your mouth shut. If we lean on it, and trust it. We have to trust it. And the way we trust the Holy Spirit goes back to God's word. Don't be ashamed. There are some good words about being ashamed and there are some um, convicting words about shame in the Bible. And I'm going to share those with you. But don't be ashamed. Shame and guilt embarrassment stops us from doing lots of things if you believe this and you I know you believe what Jesus did in your lives I know you believe that but we're just like the Israelite nation Jesus does miracles in our lives and does things miracles around us and then we get down the out in the desert another 20 miles we forget what happened We need to remember how God worked in our life because that could be part of our testimony also. But it also encourages us to know that, man, the last time I went and talked to that person and I was scared, man, it was the greatest experience I ever had. That person was encouraged and, and I, I felt, I felt God. But then the next time I see somebody, I go through the same conversation. Don't be ashamed. Jesus is the power. Jesus, not your ability and your knowledge. That's not the power. Jesus is the power. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 8. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And their suffering of the gospel and our suffering of the gospel is two totally different things. But the gospel is where he is sacrificing his life. It's to make sure people hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And if that means the next time an umpire makes a, a bad call... <laughs> And you say, I didn't like that call, but Jesus still loves you anyway. <laughs> the Spirit of God that he gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. It is the power of God that brings people to salvation. Not our good works. Not our ability to, to be a good person. It can help with the relationship part of it. It gives us an opportunity to talk to them. But it gives us the opportunity to talk to them about the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. The power doesn't come from us. The power comes from the creator of the universe through Jesus Christ and, and through the Holy Spirit. That's where the power of salvation and the power of justification, the power of sanctification comes from. Not from us. Mark 8, 38. If anyone is ashamed of me, and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. I don't like that scripture very well. Because there are times that I wouldn't say that I'm ashamed, but I am embarrassed. 
because when I get around construction workers and their lifestyle, and I remember what that lifestyle is about, I just kind of melt away and just don't say nothing and walk away. It'd be a great opportunity to say, I know Jesus. I, I don't have to. Some of you may know what construction worker talk is like. Jesus can be interjected at any point, at any time. But if anyone is ashamed of me, in my words, in this adulterous, sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them. Luke 12, 8 and 9. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledge me, acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And I'm, it's not so much about disowning, it's just, it's, it's about the power that the Holy Spirit gives us to talk about Jesus. We don't lean on that. We don't use it. We don't trust it. We don't, that, that, it boils down to trust. It boils down to trust for me. Is that really the Holy Spirit? Man, I really got other things I need to do. Well, I don't. So, be on your way. When you leave here today, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Some of Jesus' last words is, we're supposed to go share. Share the gospel of Jesus with people. He didn't say, go be good people. He didn't say, go do good deeds. Um, go be nice to people. Go work hard. Go tell people who I am and what my father has done for them. And that he loves everybody always, no matter where you came from, no matter what you've done. Matthew 9, 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yeah, what, what happens when you have grain in the fields and you don't have enough people to move the grain? What happens when you don't have enough people to, to get the grain planted? Um, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Um, you've all had jobs where there are people who come to the place of employment, but they are not workers. They are there, but they are not workers. Brandon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when work needs to be done and you have people there getting their paycheck, but they are not doing their job, does the work get done? It does if you put enough pressure and if there's enough people willing to work overtime to get it. But if it's so much work that a few people can't do it, um, there is going to be um, some people left out. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. There's a lot of people showing up to, to their place of employment but not doing any of the work. They're just showing up. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I am sending you. Jesus is sending you. Be on your way. And I'm, we can, we can all take baby steps. Just talk to one person. And don't, you don't even have to say a lot. Just somehow interject the name Jesus in a good way, in a conversation. Baby steps. And the more that we do it, 
the more comfortable we'll be. People say, well, I'm not an evangelist. You may not be evangelist. Jesus didn't say only evangelists go out and tell people about me. He sent the disciples, all those that know him, go tell people about me. And so evangelists um, love to talk, and they are constantly talking about Jesus. That is a gift that they have. That is a gift that God gave them. But the rest of us, Jesus did things in our lives and Jesus is continuing to do things in our lives and people need to know about Jesus. Um, Donna's at a funeral today. I was talking to a man yesterday You know, he was talking about death and um, when you go to a funeral home and you know those people knew Jesus, man, it, it's just, I don't, I don't feel a bit sad. I feel sad for the people, the family, but I don't feel sad for that person. But when you go to a funeral and you're questioning, did they know Jesus? And knowing that they no longer have a choice. I know I have friends and family that I know don't know Jesus. I, they know Jesus, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus. And it's not my job to force them into a relationship, but it is my job to talk about Jesus. So, a guy told me about two suicides one of the days this weekend. Two suicides. And suicides used to, I used to always think they were, you didn't hear about them very often. Now there's suicides all over the place. And that is because people, people have no hope and they have no one in their life that they believe cares about them. You have to be the, the very, I would think you would have to be at the very end of your rope to commit suicide. There are people walking around with smiles on their faces during the day. They go home every night contemplating suicide. And we don't know who those people are because they're very good at putting on fronts. We don't even have to know who those people are. We know the most powerful name in the universe that we can share with people that have smiles on their faces, who have tears in their eyes. We don't have to fix anything. We just have to introduce them to the most powerful name in the universe and allow Jesus to work with them. And, and we are here. We are here to continue to do the work, to share Jesus, to help people understand what a relationship with Jesus looks like. So, Go tell somebody about Jesus. And, and not just a, whoo-hoo, I got it done this week. I did my one. And then we feel all this relief and I don't have to do it. Life, our life, if Jesus is our Lord and Savior, if he is our master, even when it doesn't sound right in our worldview eyes, because what makes it sound wrong is we look at things through the world, world's eyes. When the Spirit asks us to do something and it correlates with who God is, follow through with it. I will guarantee you, you will have a story. You will have a story about how you felt when you was obedient to the Holy Spirit. I'll guarantee it. And I would love to hear them. Let's pray. God, I just, I, I want to thank you. You know, we don't have to depend on words that are carried down from generation to generation. You give us your, your word, um, the Bible. And I want to thank you. We don't have to memorize the whole thing because you give us your spirit. God, I want to thank you that we do not have to fear anything in this world we don't have to fear anything when we take that last breath because of what you allowed your son to go through. 
But God, as we continue to take breath, as we continue to live out our lives here on this earth, I ask you to give us the boldness and the courage to carry out what you are asking us to do. And God, just like Robin said, she had that ache in her stomach. She just didn't feel right. God, maybe do it three times over for us to make sure that we understand. Impress upon us how important it is to talk to people that you already know we're going to come in contact with this week. God, I pray. I pray that the name of Jesus Christ will trans transform someone's life this week because of someone in this room. I pray that the power the power of just the name of your son will change somebody's life. God, just like Christy said, you, are, you love us always. Your word says you will be with us always. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Your, your Holy Spirit will counsel and guide and give us the words or the actions. So God, thank you for not just letting us wallow around down here and trying to figure it out on our own. God, you are a good God. And I do look forward. I look forward to your son returning. But there's some people that I would really like to be in heaven with me. I would, there are some people that I would really like for them to know your son Jesus and how he works in our lives and how we can have peace. How we don't have to be stressed out. How we don't have to fear anymore. Because of your son Jesus. I pray that Jesus is on our lips this week. And I pray all these things in his name. Amen.